Get out of my nightmare. Yes, <laughs> if you have noticed these, these little annoying flies by the lake, maybe you're in the park, maybe it's during your morning walk, you are not alone. So here to tell us more about these, what are they? Entomologist Antonia Guedati, good morning to you. Good morning. Morning, thanks for being here, Antonia. And look, a lot of people see these little black flies and they think they're gnats. But they're not gnats. What the midge? Tell us more about these <laughs> midges, please. So those are both common names. Um, gnats are one are used to describe one family or other fa many different families of flies. And midge is a name that's used to describe some other families. Is there, um, sorry, Antonio, I was just going to say, is there a major difference between the two? Uh, yes, they're totally different families of flies. Um, and common names, we don't like to use them that much in entomology because they can be confusing, right? Um, there can be biting, there can be non-biting uh, gnats, there can be biting and non-biting midges. The ones that we're seeing right now, those are non-biting midges. So that's a really good thing. Um, they can be, um, we often see these uh, midges in Toronto near the lake shore. Um, and they look a little bit like mosquitoes, but they're not like mosquitoes, except that they're both aquatic uh, species, which means that the larvae live in the water. Um, and they look about the same, they're about the same size, about one centimeter, um, but they don't all emerge at the same time. So you don't always have mosquitoes at the same time as midges. Okay, so midges, as you're saying, uh, by the water, most parts, you know, I live sort of close to the water and, I, you know, I don't want to open my windows because they're all up on them. <laughs> they're all up on the screen. Uh, what yep. typically time of year are we seeing them uh, early spring into the summer or is it all throughout? You can see them almost at any time of year, not so much in the winter, of mm -hmm. course, uh, but they're most noticeable when they have their mass emergences, um, typically in the spring or the fall. Um, so the last month has been pretty, there's been a lot of them. Oh, that's for noticed. sure. Yeah, yeah. Right away, as you're describing it, Antonio, no joke, I think Devo and I at the same time just started yeah, just, itching ourselves. I just did. all of a sudden felt like this. But here's the thing. They <laughs> might seem a, a bit annoying, but there is a use to them. They can be helpful. <laughs> Please they have paint a that picture. There's a reason why they're good. <laughs> they are. So for one, when they're larvae, they're scavengers. So they're eating a lot of the... Um, the stuff at the bottom of the lake. They're also really, really important for the food chain because they're fish food. Um, when they become pupae and they float up to the surface, that's like a feeding frenzy for the fish. They're also, um, the fish dig at the bottom of the lake and they eat the, the tiny larvae, which are sometimes called blood worms. As adults, birds, dragonflies, uh, bats, there are all kinds of animals that feed on the adults. And the adults don't live for very long um, and they don't feed on anything except for maybe some nectar sometimes, but not very many of them feed. So the really, really important part of the food chain. Plus, if there's particular species present, they can be indicators of good water quality. And if there's some other species present, they can also be good indicators of poor water quality. So it's kind of important to have midges. If they're not there in the water, it's a bad sign, um, given how important they are as, as part of the food web. Uh, quickly, I want to ask this uh, last question here, Antonia. I notice when we go for a bike ride or if we're down by the beach, why do they follow us? <laughs> what do we do to get them to stop following? Because it's like, we're going to show a photo that's a whole pile of hashtag three O's nope to oh. me right there. Oh. But why do they follow us? Like, what can we do to avoid that? Or can we? So there's just so many of them. They're looking for some place to land mm -hmm. in this particular case. Um, the male swarms, the males swarm, sorry. Um, and so sometimes they use markers on the shoreline um, as, as something sort of to, to swarm over. But sometimes they will latch onto someone, say maybe you've got a white baseball cap, something mm -hmm. pale against a dark background. Um, and so they might follow that, but they don't 
always do this. Um, typically, they'll stay in the, the location that they've chosen to swarm. Okay, so, so you didn't do anything wrong, necessarily. I'll black everything uh, yeah, when I go for those bike good. rides, I'll tell you you're that. Good. Okay, a lot yeah. of information here, Antonio. <laughs> a lot of people still have questions, so if you want to do that, you can follow her on Twitter, at Antonio Guadati. Thank you for your time today. No problem. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great day. You Thanks, too. you too.